Hi guys, uh, my name is Sami Gandor, I'm the, one of the owner of Salty Water Tackle. We've been talking to you in the past uh, about our fishing trip and expeditions and today uh, they're going to be a different uh, episode. We're going to talk about the fishing that we did, um, all of us in the past months, uh, just a small, uh, small update of uh, what we did and um, how the trip went and with who we went. And uh, the second, we're going to talk about uh, North Carolina trips. Uh, you know, the bluefin tuna fishery in, uh, in North Carolina is, is around the corner, and we should be we should start looking for reports and see fish in the area. Probably another four to six weeks, so we're going to keep our eyes open about it. But uh, first, uh, let's start, um, and we talk a little bit about our fishing trip that we did in the past months. As you guys are aware, that uh, Paul went to Tanzania. Uh, the the uh, Doctor's tuna fishing was a little bit slow due to the cold front that they had, and it seems that uh, the season for uh, the season did not start. It was a bit late. However, they had an amazing uh, top water bite for uh, yellowfin tuna, and the customers were very happy. And they caught fish up to 70 kilo, 75 kilo on top water. And they caught some decent sized GT. Nothing really spectacular in the 40, 50 kilo, but um, it was a constant, uh, uh, constant, constant hookup, I would say, and it kept the guys going for the whole day. So all in all, it was a very successful trip, I, I would call it. Uh, Raymond went to uh, Riva Bay and to our operation in, uh, in French Polynesia. Um, it was a little bit almost the same, but not so. They had a good bite of Doctor's tuna. And uh, they landed a couple of small ones, of course the big one, get away. Uh, the highlight for his trip is uh, they had nice GT on the last day, estimated from 50 to 55 kilo, and they've seen some bigger fish in the area. Uh, they succeeded on landing three big fish uh, in the range of you know, 40 kilo to 50 kilo, I would say. And I went, uh, I ended up going to uh, <clears throat> to Sri Lanka. It was such an experience. I really enjoyed it. Had a great time. Uh, I wasn't expecting it's going to be great, but you know, I was really surprised. It was amazing. I had a great time. We got some good opportunity to get some big fish. The weather did not, you know, wasn't on our favor. We made it happen. And uh, they had a really good operation over there. And uh, you know, the guys know what they're doing. All in all, I would uh, start, you know, planning trip for next year uh, to start fishing in Sri Lanka as well. After my trip to Sri Lanka, I went right away to Lebanon. I wanted to visit the family, and lucky, luckily, uh, you know, the bluefin tuna fishery start. Uh, I mean, the bluefin tuna season just started, and I was watching it when I was in Sri Lanka. It really got heated up, and we had some amazing top water feed that. Uh, Actually, Evan, I'm, I'm passing the, the video for Evan today, and he will do the editing later. We went, uh, on the best day, uh, we went six out of eight on top water, and it was an amazing feed, beautiful turquoise water, um, fishing in, in shorts and, you know, in t-shirt. So it was all in all, it was great. Now I want to talk a little bit about uh, North Carolina. Since the season is coming, um, this fishery is, keeps on expanding and expanding in North Carolina. And I remember when we started it four or five years ago, when we started going down to North Carolina, how it was, and how we get greeted at the dock when we first show up with our tackle and with our little short jigging rod and the popping. And, and how it developed nowadays and it get to where it is. It's something really, really special. and. Um, you know, I admire the people that took the road and took the pass with me on the past five years and they keep on going and coming and putting the time and effort to make it, to make that fishery international, you know, to make, to let people look at it from all over the world and to come and join us and to fish with us for, for, that, for that kind of amazing top water bite and jigging bite in North Carolina. Um, the tackle that, you know, a lot of people come to North Carolina, they don't know what they're encountering and what they're going to be, you know, the size of fish, the experience, uh, all these things. So uh, when people book through us, we try to put them in track of uh, what we're doing, how we're doing it, 
what's the regulation and what is the adequate tackle for North Carolina. And again, um, for jigging, I wouldn't recommend less than PEA rod to jig. And the same goes for, for popping rod. I even suggest a PE10 rod. Um, the fish there, they're really massive, they're big. You know, so there's some occasional fish that range from 60 inch to 70 inch. But um, we've been catching some really big fish up to 400. Last year we succeeded on landing a 457 and it was uh, 92 inch long. Uh, we lost some really big fish in the past, but um, you know the area hold really some massive big fish. So any anglers that is preparing for a trip like this, he really got to do his homework. Uh, and uh, there will be another video, probably in another three, four weeks, we're going to talk about the tackle that we use for North Carolina. We're going to talk about the lines, we're going to talk about the twisty leader and the approach for those big fish and why we use certain things and we don't use other things. Uh, you know, there is two ports in North Carolina that we fish from. And we fish from Oregon Inlet and we fish from Hatteras. But uh, those are the two main ports that uh, we launch in, we launch from for, uh, to target bluefin tuna in North Carolina. There's a lot of captains you can use and you can always call us and you can always join our trip and uh, we will guide you through it. We'll give you, we'll share with you our knowledge and experience and uh, you know, we'll make it happen to you and hopefully the, that fishery is going to last for, for a while. The regulation is really, really strict. We, we are only allowed to keep one fish per day, which is less than 73 inch, but of course regulation is, is constantly changing, so that could change at any given time. Uh, we normally, if we decide to kill a fish, we chip it in between, you know, the whole group. Everybody go home with, with a piece. We, you know, make them happy and bring something to the house is not, is not a bad idea. We basically moved all our trip starting in March, beginning of March. This way for the guys that coming in from overseas, they will have the ultimate shot at those fish and we, we don't want to bring, we don't want to take guys just on a boat ride. We want them to have a great experience. We want them to come back, and we want we want them to have a good, good time enjoying what they what they like to do the most. So again, no more trip for, for customers in Feb, but we are starting this year, beginning of March all the way till the end of March. So we basically have around 27 days of booking for March. So there are going to be a lot of reports coming in from our side and we have four trips for this. It's, it's been divided between five to six days for all this trip. It was one day break in between for us. At least this way we can have the time to drive guys back and forth. Um, concerning, concerning the tackle that we use, I'm going to talk a little bit about lures this time and the reason why we like to use these kind of lures. Okay. I personally don't encourage people to use poppers and there's a reason for it. I mean, you can catch a fish on popper in North Carolina, no doubt about it. Those fish are hungry, they're starving, they come from the deep and they've been traveling, some of them comes in, you know, there's two bodies of fish actually comes in. One comes in from the med and another one comes in that hugs the shore, our shore and comes all the way from the north and go down south. Those fish that comes in, they hit the continental shelf and they go up. When they go up, they've been traveling for a long time, they're starving, they're hungry. You basically cast any lure or stick bait, you get a bite. And uh, let's not be picky about what you need to cast. However, I'm in favor of longer lure. And the reason for that is I've seen so many fish in the past getting hooked up on a smaller lure, probably five to six inch. And because of the size of that fish, what happened is it end up swallowing the lure with a treble hook. And I've seen so many bloods coming out from it. I'm not saying that um, I don't take fish, I do take fish home, but I don't want to waste that fish. If there is a way to revive it and have a successful release, I'm in it 100% and I like to see that. Um, so basically I, I switched to a single assist hook on the lure and a single hook on the back and giving the shout Kodako hook uh, as, the best, as the best hook for this kind of application. 
The assist hook, we don't normally run it to run all the way from the nose over here to the belly. One single assist hook. And the other one would be one on the back. And sometimes, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys that prefer to use one single assist hook without even using a hook on the tail, which is as well as well as a good idea because basically you avoid having that back hook attached to the head of the fish and will eliminate that problem that the fish is hooked up on the side is fighting you on the side um, and this is the reason why as well we use the longer the longer rule this is from siren it's a new sinking lure that uh, Jason's working on it's it's an amazing lure and this is when the fish are really like uh, shy a bit from coming up to the top you can cast it, count to 20 or 30, and it will go down. And you know, you start twitching it slowly and hopefully get a bite. Uh, this is the Badman uh, 250. We had great success with it over there. It's a top water lure. And we have one of my favorites. This is the Motocon Maru. It's a prototype. We really had great success on these stick baits I mean from day one really really good lures uh, the only problem is they're not easy to find I mean, and Tosa San is, uh, is a one-man job so you know big problem on getting a batch more than 20 piece uh, this one is the lure that was accounted for the big fish we landed last year okay we had two of these one of them is on the shelf and that's the second one so this is the kind of uh, stick bait we're looking at, anywhere from 25 uh, to 30 uh, mm ASWB from Australia. That's a good size as well. We did catch fish on the stores in the past. It's good. It swim great. CB1. They tested their new lures last year in North Carolina, and they landed a lot of fish on it. It's um, it's a new one and they should be available in our shop in Jan, I think, I think the second or the third week of Jan 2015. Favorite lure, Gamma 160H, deadly. Bertox, another good lure that could be used in North Carolina. If you notice, I'm not that picky about the, the model rather than the length of the lure. I mean, you can as well catch fish, and if you don't want to spend the money, there's nothing wrong with uh, with those Shimano. The, those are the latest one from Japan. They're really good, and they uh, we did catch some fish, you know, with those lures in uh, in Cape Cod. Um, my favorite jigs for North Carolina is uh, the Hot Drift Tune. I love those jigs. They flutter all the way down, on the way down. Um, good presentation. They get the attention as well, and you know you can use those from 240 to 330. Depends about depends on the current. Really, it's like one of my favorites, and I, I love those jigs. They, they're great. Uh, the other one is the uh, as well. It's uh, it's, uh, it's the shabu shop, uh, shabu shop, and um, as well the presentation is good. You know they flutter on the way down and these kind of jigs you can both use it for conventional setup and for spinning setup and they they're proven i mean you know we we caught a lot of fish on those jigs um one of my favorites okay i wish that this jig actually comes in in 300 gram this is the shout to this i will never ever f travel anywhere without having two of these jigs with me they come in 180 gram and 210 gram they are they had an amazing, amazing fluttering action, and they are really good. They're not expensive, and they produce fish. You know, the only problem is if the current is really strong, you can't use them. And the latest is from CB10. Uh, this one is good for a conventional setup, and uh, you know we used it. It's proven. It's a it's a it's a good jig as well. Uh, Gotta make sure whenever you use those jigs, or you use the uh, the stick the stick bait, uh, to have the hook wider than the stick stick bait and wider than the the jig. 
So as a matter of fact, you want you want the jig to pass through completely up and down and be free. And the same goes for for the lure. Uh, if you choose the 7 0 for this lure and you're gonna cast with an assist, it's gonna probably hook the bag. When, whenever it's gonna hook the bag, the only exposed hook is gonna be the one on the back on the tail. And it's not really appropriate. You know, bluefin tuna tend all the time to hit the head. They go for the head all the time. So what happened is, you know, you're retrieving your lures and all of a sudden, you know, what happened is the fish comes in, they come in for the head, and when they hit the head, they flap with the tail. They try to break, you know, to break the, uh, the, uh, the bait. And that's why most of the time, 90% of the time, you see basically the hookup comes in from the assist, from the assist hook. It's because of that reason, you know. Tuna tend to hit the head. They go for the head. They don't go for the tail. So you gotta pay. You gotta pay attention to your uh, to your stick bait all the time. What I keep on telling guys, especially new guys that comes into fish for uh, for those bluefin tuna, is they cast and they talking to each other and this and that. You really, you gotta concentrate of on what you're doing. So and and this is this is good. I mean, it's good for you and it's good for the for the fishery because basically what happened is. You're casting that lure, and you keep your eyes on that lure, and you focus on that lure, and your brain is going to react as soon as you're going to see that hit. So whenever you see that hit, you're going to, you know, you're going to set the hook, and when you set the hook, you're going to have that ultimate hookup on the side over here. When you're not paying attention to it, and you're talking, and that fish comes in and swallow it, and I've seen it too many guys, the whole lure is going to end up inside the mouse, inside, and this is when the damage is done to the fish. So we try as much as we could to preserve them for our kids and children. You know, I want to fish one day and I want to see my kids next to me fishing and targeting bluefin tuna. We talk about this a lot in the house. So, you know. Um, next week we will be talking about um, our system leader that we use and the kind of setup we use for, uh, in terms of line, line capacity, reel, uh, stuff like that. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Hey, how's it guys? Just hanging out here with uh, Sammy and the Salty Water crew. Just flew in, had lunch with these guys. It's good to have you, man. Out. This is another uh, GT maniac from Hawaii. He started the, uh, you know, the catch and release in Hawaii. So he's really doing a catch and release. You know, Lua is very well known in Hawaii to catch and kill. But Charles is doing an amazing, amazing job on catching and releasing uh, the fish. Raymond, Raymond and yourself uh, went last uh, this year uh, to Hawaii, and you guys had an, ex an amazing experience with him. You, I, I think you guys caught like 35 GT in three days, four days period. Right? So I'm looking forward for uh, joining next year. I'm gonna go and fish in Hawaii. And so I've been to Hawaii three times. I've seen GT on the water when I was swimming, but I never fished in Hawaii. So that's gonna be my first GT uh, trip to Hawaii. Yeah. Looking forward. Yeah. yeah. See. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah. <laughs>